welcome. Thank you for joining me. What I'd like to show you in this film is how to do some uh, renderings in the inside of the house. Renderings help you uh, kind of visualize the inside of the house is one of those tools you have that Revit Architecture gives you that when you're getting close to the end of your uh, design of your model of your uh, building that you want to want to construct ultimately, that is uh, the way you want it to look like on the inside of the house. It gives you the opportunity to see what a room might look like and uh, maybe scale it up or down, move some walls around to, to try to get the final look on the inside of your house. Because what you're doing here is you're you're creating space on the inside of a house. You want to make sure that that space is uh, provides uh, the most benefit to you as a designer and ultimately the owner. So first couple things I want to do is uh, perhaps uh, if you haven't done so, is set a location where your uh, home's going to be. This way you have the opportunity to uh, take advantage of uh, where the sun might be during certain times of the year in order to uh, modify the design of your home your building in order to take advantage of uh, you know, perhaps in the winter time with a low sun angle take advantage of the sun streaming through the windows and providing that little bit of extra heat and light but in the summertime having a, a, an overhang over the windows so that uh, the sunlight will not come in when the sun's a little bit uh, higher up in the sky at least it uh, per, you know, provide an opportunity for the sun to come in with less intensity so let's do this let's provide a location if you haven't done so if you go to the manage tab Go to the location button under the project location palette and click on that guy. And what it does, uh, the default setting, if you haven't done this yet, is going to set it up somewhere in Massachusetts, probably where the Autodesk uh, headquarters are. And uh, what you want to do is uh, take this little icon and move it around. I was kind of playing around with this earlier. It looks like it's pretty close to the North Pole, so I'm going to drag it to some land here, maybe the top of uh, Greenland. And just for the fun of it, just to show you where the sun's going to be on some of these things, let's go to OK on this. And if you go down to your uh, view control bar, we've uh, gone through a number of these settings. These two are the ones we're going to be looking at here, and that is going to be uh, where the sun path is. You can set that on and off, and you're going to turn off your shadows on and off. So both of these probably X'd out for you right now. So let's go to sun path off. It gives you three settings. You go to sun settings up here, and then sun path off. Let's go ahead and turn the sun path on. You can see where the sun's going to be. Now let's go ahead and turn on shadows too while we're down here. So here's the sun in Greenland, right at the middle of summer, and uh, the sun is at the highest in the sky, at least in Greenland. And the kind of fun thing about this is that when you're approaching the North Pole, when you're actually at the North Pole, the sun really doesn't set for months. It stays very low on the horizon, but it's up all the time. And of course, as you come down from the North Pole towards the equator, you got more and more of an angle on that sun as, as it comes down. So right now, while, while we're up in Greenland, it has a very narrow uh, uh, angle to it, but it does have an angle. So midday, it's going to be about 23, and you know, 20 degrees above the horizon, and towards the end of the day, sunset or overnight, which it really doesn't set up in Greenland, it's going to be much lower up in the sky. So that's kind of fun to play with. You can set any location on the planet, but let's go back to location again. Let's actually move this to a place where it's a little bit more usable. Probably don't want to build on a glacier there, so I'm going to drag this into North America and scoot in a little bit closer. And what you do is you grab the, the bottom of the what looks like a, a lollipop, a little arrow there, and put that in a place where you see fit. You can use your middle mouse button to scroll it in and out. And we live in uh, in uh, the Kittitas Valley here around Ellensburg, around Central Washington University. So depending on the speed of your uh, hookup, I'm going to put it over here. Somewhere out in the country. In fact, let's just put it right where we live. And we'll go from there. Neat thing about this is that it's going to establish a very uh, you know, precise location with latitude and longitude. These items, these values here can be changed if you want to modify that to even closer. And the resolution on that is really high, going out, what, about 10 significant digits beyond the decimal. So when you do that, go to OK. You'll notice that the sun path uh, changes again. You're going to have much of a much greater angle on that. Once it reloads, come on, come on. Let's just try that location again. Maybe I just didn't quite get it in the right location. Yeah, I did. So let's try our sun path on and off again, see if that resets it. What you're going to look for is, uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see a much steeper angle of the sun. And the sun is going to be much higher up in the sky. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next video.